Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. And I know it's been absolutely ages, I think it's been over a month since I last posted a video. Um, and that's just been because my you know, real life has been really, really busy. And I'm just gonna give a really quick update on it and then I'll move on to the main topic of the video. So, the <laughs> reason why I haven't been posting much recently is simply because um, I've changed jobs. Um, I know back in the new year, I said that I was kind of wanting to go back into design and in March, I basically made that switch happen. I could have stayed in Ridge, but what they were offering me wasn't competitive enough and it wasn't going to be back in design immediately. And looking around for jobs, this company was offering me much higher salary. And with everything going on in the world, inflation going up, it just, it, you know, the financial attraction and to be able to start back in design immediately um, was a huge draw. And going back into this, into design, into a much smaller firm, it's been really nice to be able to work really closely with the clients, contractors, architects, um, really hands-on. I mean, projects are really small, really, really small at the moment. Hopefully we'll be working on bigger projects, but at the moment it's you know really hands-on, talking to clients, talking to contractors, and really getting into that nitty-gritty detail. And I think generally that's, um, a really big strength of mine is being able to you know, do sketches, get really hands on with the you know, clients, contractors and really coming up with a really effective solution, a buildable solution as well. Meeting the client's expectations, you know, can they have this? Yes you can, but it's going to cost you extra, you know, and working out that balance and doing that first hand on smaller projects, um, you're much more likely to get that experience on working on smaller projects than much larger projects. Um, so that's one thing which I've been really busy on. I've also uh, got a puppy and that has been taking up a load of time and it's really like tiring and exhausting trying to train a puppy. Um, but yeah, um, coming back from work and then having to deal with the puppy, train it, has just been too exhausting. Um, so I'm probably shifting my focus on making videos not during the week because um, I'm just too tired. Um, so I'm shifting it to the weekend. And it's something which I didn't really want to do originally, which was to work on weekends. I really wanted weekends to be, you know, just about chilling out. But unfortunately, that's I think that's the way I'm going to be moving forward. But I'm still aiming to push more content. And with the change to my job to a smaller firm, I'm hoping to be able to get out more videos about doing the nitty gritty detail, working with clients, and really showcasing the sort of um, strengths which I have which can transform you into doing smaller, medium, or even larger projects. I'm also hoping to show more footage of, you know, site and construction sites, you know, looking at details on site when I go to site. Um, and I just think that visual aspect of the video would be a lot better. So stay tuned, remember to like and subscribe to make sure that this new content is gonna be shown to you all. And so moving on to the main topic of today's video, which was kind of brought about me changing jobs and a couple of my former colleagues and friends have also changed jobs and kind of what brings that about. My circumstances are slightly different, but I'm seeing a really big trend from people leaving good companies or perceived good companies um, and they're good engineers, but why are they leaving? What are the main reasons why engineers are kind of moving companies or just flat out leaving the industry completely? I think one of the biggest things is probably salary. Structural engineering salaries in the UK are not fantastic. They are quite low for what we have to do. Um, not just the amount of work we do, but the responsibility of what we have to do. And that is, we're designing something which controls the safety of people. If the building falls down, that's on us, the structural engineers. So that's a big burden for us to take on. And I just don't think the pay is reflective of that. I get other jobs are similar. You know, you have a big responsibility for health and safety, you know, such as I know, nurses, doctors, they're probably underpaid for the amount of hours they work and the stress they get put under to care for people's well-being. And unfortunately for engineers, that is driven by the company itself. You know, big or small companies have overheads, fixed costs, which they have to I mean, pay for to make sure that the company stays afloat. And then also when you're setting out your fee, that fee has to translate into a profit. And 
I think a lot of firms are doing structural engineering or engineering in general a disservice by going really hard on the fee and being too competitive on the fee to make sure that they win the work. But it comes as a sort of double-edged sword. You win the work at a really low fee, really competitive fee, and then you're squeezing your engineers super hard to make sure that they stay in profit. And what happens when people get squeezed, the, the employees, the engineers who are doing most of the work, not the directors feeing the work, the directors who feel the work, they fear it and then they move on to the next one. Whereas the engineers who have to do it will realize I've got this tiny budget I need to work to. How can I actually return a profit on this, but still do a good job? So then engineers start cutting corners. You know, they start eyeballing stuff and then the design is not as effective as it should be. They make mistakes, you know, they cut corners and they don't think things through properly, just so that they can make sure that original tiny fee is in profit. Because, you know, what happens if you deliver a project and it wasn't on profit? They're not gonna see the fault of the director who feed it too low, not necessarily, but they'll look at, you know, wow, this engineer has spent so much, you know, has overspent on the budget. This engineer is bad because, you know, he's overspent on the project budget, you know, and then they start looking into that, which is not a good feeling. Personally, I think a lot of the fault lies with the fear. The person who quotes the job doesn't have a true understanding on how long a project would actually take. And being overly competitive and doing a complete disservice to the industry. And kind of when this happens, when you know an engineer has been given a load of projects which have been under feed, the engineer, what I know, would do their best to make sure that it comes you know, within budget and they're doing a good job, but it gets really, really hard. It means that they're probably working more than their contracted hours, you know, they're spending extra time every day doing this work to make sure that, it's basically they're doing free work for the company to make sure that the project looks profitable. And over a short period of time, it's probably not too bad because it does happen. But over a prolonged sustained period, it's just not, in my opinion, very sustainable for the engineer to have to take on all this extra work not you know get paid a low salary that doesn't get paid over time you know it's not common for engineers to get paid over time they're taking on all the stress why you know when you lay all these things out why should a person stay in a job who does this why not just move into a different job you know, less stress get paid more and you're working you know your contracted hours and then you get to go home and not think about it like don't you know, remember like i may have mentioned this before but it's very hard to leave as an engineer to leave your work at the office because when things get stressful you're thinking about things all the time all the time you know have i done this right have i you know when i cut a corner did i cut it too much do i have to go back and rethink it you know it becomes really really stressful situation and it's just not something which you want to go through all the time and i think that's a really big problem in engineering at the moment where the fee is getting squeezed so hard and the engineer is getting squeezed so hard just to turn a profit that it just doesn't become enjoyable at the moment. When I first started, I actually really, really enjoyed you know, my work. I wasn't working like super long hours, but I was putting in a lot of effort, but we were making money, so it doesn't really matter. But then as time grew on in that company anyway, we were working longer and longer hours we weren't turning a profit for some reason and it was the stress was just becoming unimaginable because we were getting all these projects in and this is something which we couldn't understand we were working so much we had loads of projects loads of really good projects on paper but we weren't making any money and that fundamentally i think it comes down to the fee you know the engineers can be really really efficient at what they do but if the fee is so small to begin with it just makes it really really hard and this just becomes overly repetitive when you're winning, you're trying to make money, turn a profit, so you're trying to win more jobs, but the jobs you're winning are all under feed. So it means you're just trying to churn out even more projects and cutting even more corners. And eventually one of those projects, one of those projects which you've cut a corner on is gonna be a disaster. And that's obviously not what you want, but that's gonna dawn on your head every day if you're working in this environment where 
everything's on the feed of cutting corners, you're taking loads on, and eventually you're just gonna just sack it off completely, either change company or you're just gonna give up engineering completely, which is obviously not what we want because structural engineers are very, very important to the world. We need us to design buildings. Um, in a way, possibly, engineers are undervalued. People most likely, you know, when they look at a building, they turn to the architect, but it's the engineers that actually make a lot of it stand up. And I think a lot of the time that can be forgotten. But putting that aside, I think there's a lot of things where, as an industry, as structural engineers, we can do better on. And as I'm working at a smaller firm now, I'm doing a lot, of, a lot more fee quotes, and I will always try and push for a higher amount. If it gets knocked down, fine, but I'll start higher and then get knocked down because I value the time that we have to put in. I value not just the time, but the responsibility that we have, the knowledge that we have. Having joined this company and trying to share my knowledge with the younger engineers, it's kind of amazing how much I actually do know. I forget how much I've learned over all these years and how much knowledge I actually have. I'm not saying I'm like super smart, but it is amazing how much you can accumulate over all these years. And it is amazing how much and how people do underappreciate just how much knowledge that we have. And what's been amazing, especially on a project I kind of went to site on last week or two weeks ago, um, talking to the client and you know, I was walking around his house telling me that I like different ideas of what he could, could and couldn't do, or things that he could do, but it's gonna cost him a lot of money. And he really appreciated the amount of knowledge that I had and the kind of options that I was giving him because at the time he was just working with the architect and he only kind of had a few visions of what, what was possible. But until I went to site with him and explained to him, well, you could do this or you could do that, but it's gonna cost you extra, but it's gonna look a lot better. You know, if you, you know, got rid of the post and put these cantilever beams in, it's gonna look a whole lot better. The feeling of the space can be better, but it's gonna cost you money. And that's the trade off. And that's the thing which I can't answer for you. That's just something which you've got to consider. Pay more for a better space, or would you be able to live with the fact that you need some columns here? The space would be less visually, visually attractive, but it's gonna save you a hell of a lot of money. I don't know their budget, but these are the options I'm presenting. And I think that's the value which a lot of engineers will have, but we don't get paid for very much. And I think pushing, you know, when we fear quote, that's what we should be pushing. We're pushing us and we're not trying to undervalue what we can bring to the table. Like moving forward, if you're looking for a new job or if you're a graduate, I don't want this video to kind of put you off becoming an engineer because being a structure engineer is, it is a good career to go into. You know, you're creating buildings, you're creating space for people to live in. It is very exciting sometimes, but there's also a lot of drawbacks. And I think one thing to really consider is to make sure that you are not undervalued Graduate salaries haven't really changed over the past sort of eight to 10 years, which is crazy. And it's no wonder that, you know, fresh graduates, you know, people who have studied civil engineering don't even become, like go on to become an engineer. They go on to do accounting finance or something because um, accountants actually really value engineering students. And as a, you know, as a graduate or undergrad, you kind of look at the salaries and you think, you know, why Why would I go into engineering if I'm getting paid solo and the trajectory of salaries is so low compared to, I don't know, finance. And I know engineers will never get paid the same amount as people who work in finance, but we should be able to get paid more. We should be starting at a higher salary grade. Like when I was starting as a grad, what, nearly 10 years ago now, uh, starting salary was like 22K, 23K. And I'm pretty sure that hasn't really shifted, which is just absolutely crazy. So that really, really needs to shift. And I think people who have the responsibility to fee a project should have ultimately that responsibility of really pushing our industry more and not letting us undervalue our experiences and what we can bring to the table. Because ultimately, if you're doing a one million pound project or any kind of project anyway, say you're doing a, a residential house, um, like a single story conversion or single story side extension, which is worth maybe 50 to 100K. Maybe it's worth 50K construction value, 
but it might add almost 100k worth of the house of value. The fee for us typically is going to be a few grand and a few grand compared to 100k in value of your property is a few percent which is absolutely crazy and people will squabble about a hundred pound fee you know it's it is absolutely nuts be confident if you're if you are in a position where you are feeing projects be confident with the number if they come back and say why is it so high it's like well i can provide you x y and z this is my expertise take it or leave it like honestly don't try like, it's really hard because you want the business but you also want to make a you know stand firm of you know, being an engineer this is you know i studied my ass off i trained loads and loads of stuff for this to become to have the experience of what i have don't let some client don't let some contractor diminish that anyway hopefully this video hasn't put too many people off being an engineer you know there's still a lot of positive things about being an engineer but there's obviously a lot of downsides but hopefully those downsides can be converted to good things it's just the right people have to do the right things so anyway Hopefully you've enjoyed the video, please remember to like and subscribe and I'll catch you on the next video. Cheers.